Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to create a Facebook group. So this has been recorded in May 2022 and I'm going to run through the practical elements of the Facebook group for you and also some of the reasons why you might want a Facebook group. So first off, why would you want a Facebook group and what benefits will that give you as a business owner? Well, the first thing, it is a great place for you to nurture your community. It's also a great place for you to actually elevate your authority in the area that you are working in. Now, obviously, if you're a brand or a product owner, you can actually use it to promote the products, show how you use the products and also have a two way conversation with your audience. Now, if you're a service provider like me, then it's also a great way of you elevating your position as the influencer within your field. So as a visibility breakthrough coach and energetic practitioner, I help people push through those limiting barriers to get the visibility that they deserve, both energetically and through mindset work, but also the practical elements. So this video is part of a practical element, but the groups access that you can get from like the benefits that you can get from having a group and nurturing people who are interested in what you do far out, far outweighs the technicality of learning how to actually set one up so don't let the technicality stop you from bringing this group of people who are connected with you online into a vacuum where you can actually nurture them and get to know them better OK, so I'm going to swap over to my Facebook account and we're going to have a little look at setting up a account on Facebook for your group. So you do have to set it up as yourself, but you can also set it up as a page. So you have to decide whether you want to set it up as your as a person or as a business page. Now, if you are a business page and you want to set up a group, you do still need to go through the whole process of setting up a group. So like here it says groups here, create a group. So if I create a group from my page, what happens is that I can, it automatically takes me as myself as the admin. So it doesn't matter whether you try to do it through your page or through your profile, you will still first of all become admin as yourself. And then you can add your page in to be admin as well. And then you can act as either your business page or yourself in the group, depending on which type of group you're building and how you want your group to grow. Here we are in the very early stages here. So create the group name. So you would put the name of your group in here. Now, the group name, if it's a brand or a business, should be related to your business or your brand, especially if it's something that you want to use to say, like get feedback or customer surveys and things like that. If, however, it's more of a community group or a focus on supporting the neighborhood, then it could be a location as a group name. For example, I have a group in Ealing called Ealing Broadway Friends, and that's really a community orientated group where everyone can join, businesses can post, friends can post, people can ask questions, etc. So just think about your group name. You can change your group name, but you can only do that once every month. So just bear in mind that when you do do it, it it does need to be quite relevant. Also, group names are quite useful in search. So think about when people are searching for what they're looking for, your group name will come up in the search on Facebook as well. So I'm just going to put testing here just for the, for the purpose of this. Now, the different group privacies are super important because Facebook have made some changes to the way the group privacies work. If you make your group public, then you can later on change it to private. If, however, you start off as a private group and you have members, you can then not change it to public. So bear in mind that setting, especially at the beginning. So if you're not sure whether you want to make the group public, then just think about the settings. Now, just quickly on group privacy, public means that anyone can see the group and what's posted, regardless of them being a member of the group. Private, there is a private closed group. So in other words, you have to join the group before you can see the content. There's also a private secret group where, again, you have to join to see the content, but the group is not searchable on Facebook. So you can't find it unless you're invited to it with a link. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create a private group right now. Now, as I said, the group can either be visible or it can be hidden. So only members can find the group if it's hidden. If it's visible, anyone can find it in search. You can invite friends as options. So you can start off with a few friends. Otherwise, once you've created it, you can actually go ahead and promote it. So go ahead and click create. And Facebook will create the group for you. Now, once your group's created, there are lots of different things that you can do with the group. Now, first of all, let's quickly go over the left hand side. This is your admin controls. There's quite a few of them. And it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're not sure what they all do. But saying that, the most important parts of your group at the moment would be in your group settings. If you click on the group settings, you're going to go to this page. This is the page where you customize your group and get everything ready for when you start inviting people. So your name and your description is done up here. So you've got your name. You can add your description in here and you don't, I don't think there's really a character count, so you can just go ahead and, and put your description in there. Your privacy, like I said before, only members can see who's in the group and what they post. Private groups can't be changed to public to protect the privacy of the group members. You can manage who can find and join this group in the high group and who can join the group settings. This again is the high group, so you can have it visible or hidden. And location, you can have a group which is located in a specific area, or you can leave it open so that it can be located anywhere. Customizing the group, this is really important, especially if your brand or business is very well known or not very well known, and you want to raise that brand's visibility. You can actually have your Facebook group's URL as your group name. So here it's got www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash and a row of numbers. You can click this button and actually change the after the groups forward slash so that you can customize the group even more. Group members, uh, group color, you can choose the color and you can also add a color. So depending on what type of color you want, you can just choose that and it will give the group a little a, like a color way. And I'll show you that in a second on the front end. Badges, you can have badges in your group if you wish. And these are all to do with admin, moderator, people who are joining, people who are really valued, really interactive, and they get lots and lots of different choices. So you can tick those ones and take those ones off. Group type is also, oh, sorry, group affiliation. This is where you can affiliate it with either a person or a page. And I'll show you how to do that once I've added the page. Also group type. This helps you to add on some of the features. So a group type is general to start off with. And if you see the features, you can now have lots of different features like emergency relief, parenting, Q&A, real-time connections, learning, mutual support, buy and sell, and gaming. So there's lots of different things that you can have in the features. And that's something that you might want to consider doing at the beginning or once your group has been set up. If you're gonna use it as a teaching group or you want to group together content into like guides, then you will need to have the learning feature set up. Badges, like I said before, were what you can add on. Other features are the guides where you can actually bring things together. You've got membership and player info. So that's what you would get in that added feature area. Let's just go back to the group settings. And then down here, you've got who can join. So this is where the Facebook page comes in. You can either have profiles or you can have pages or you can only have profiles. You need to decide whether you want your group to be just people or you're happy for brands and pages to be represented. Bear in mind that if you're happy for pages to join your group, you are also happy for multiple people to have access to the group. Because when you are an admin of a page, you can have more than one person being an admin of the page. So don't forget that if you do allow pages into your group, you may have multiple people acting as that page in your group. So it might be worth you just doing profiles. I'm gonna leave mine as profiles because that's what I prefer. Who can approve members requests? Anyone in the group? Or I would suggest changing that to admins and moderators so that you can control what's happening in the group as an admin. Who can be pre-approved to join? This is a new feature where you can choose people to be pre-approved from certain groups, or you can upload a list of emails. And then when those people join, 
you can actually, they will actually be pre-approved. Manage the discussion. This is also a really good feature. Who can post? Obviously, I'd recommend that anyone in the group can post so that you can initiate conversation. But you can, if you are getting a lot of spam, you can actually control the posts. In other words, you can, um, you can, the posts have to be approved by either an admin or a moderator of the group. I would leave it off until you get a feel for the group and then work out whether that needs to be put on for a little while. You can sort your comments, you can approve edits, you can just have a discussion tab. You can have default posts, you can do post shortcuts, so in other reels, photos and polls, so you can change the shortcuts. You can do post formats, so in other words, you can add whether people can do lives, create events, tag events, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can control that in your group if you want to. And you can also do anonymous posting. I wouldn't recommend that you do that purely because I think if you want people to get to know each other, you wouldn't want people posting anonymously. You can also add these other added features to your group. And really, you need to just decide whether those things are what you want to put in there or not. And that's pretty much how you can control your group. Other things to think about with your group is that if you are putting third party apps, such as live video streaming software, that you do need to add those in under the apps at the very end here. When you add in apps such as Zoom, Restream, Wave.video, StreamYard, things like that, you would add them in here so that that connection is made and the authority has been approved. Go back to your home and you have your group set up. You can change the header image by uploading from the photos in your group or you can upload a group um, photo as well. You can also look at an about section. So this is visible to the public, the discussions. You can have topics as well. You can see who's the members, you can add events and you can see all of the media. The media is split into three groups, photos, videos and albums. So depending on what you want your group to be used for will depend on whether you want to add all these features in. Now, if you want this group to be assigned to your Facebook page, what you need to do is you can either go into your settings and go down to adding your page in. So linking your page here by clicking manage advanced settings, link pages, go ahead and click your Facebook page and it will automatically link it and also make your page a member of your group. So if I go ahead and link that, it's going to link my Facebook page to the group. Now, if I go over here to home, you can see now that my page is also a member of the group and myself as an admin is also a member of the group. Now, if I go to my page, this is my Facebook page, and I go here to groups, you can see that the group is shown up on my page. So it gives you that connection between the two. So that's how you can link your groups, which is super awesome. Or you can come to your page here and link your group like this. Okay, perfect. When your group is on your page, people can then click on it and go to that group from the page, which is also a great way of growing up that brand awareness and that brand community and that whole community essence that you want your group to be. So that was just a whistle top show on how to set up a Facebook group and all of the elements in there. Obviously, the group is just the vacuum or the capsule for you to put people into. And those people will depend on what you want the group to be used for. So stay tuned to my YouTube channel. You'll be able to find more videos on why you want to grow a group for your business or your services or individually, locally in your local area. And the benefits of growing a group in two different ways. My name is Anita Wong. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, drop them below this video. And if you would like to talk to me further, then there'll be a link underneath this video to book in a free visibility discovery call. Thanks very much. And I will see you soon.